Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's just review a little bit what we were working on yesterday. You should have copied down in your writer's notebook this first page that talks about what an informational presentation was, right? How you're an expert sharing facts about a specific topic where we're going to be working on sharing an interesting animal. And then we put our learning target there at the bottom. Okay, so you should have copied that down from yesterday. The next page shows what a strong informational presentation uh, has in it, right? We talked about all these different parts and pieces. I want you to add one thing at the bottom for me. Okay, we're going to add this box that says screen recording. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm recording my the screen on my computer, okay, and that'll be something that you could do on your iPad as well. As you share your presentation, you can record yourself as well. So I want you to add screen recording to the list of things that make a strong presentation. If you need to pause the video to write it down, go ahead and do that. Okay, and I'm going to show you a little bit. Uh, before we move on to the next page, we're actually going to do our power organizer. But before we do that, I'm going to share a different part of my computer. I want to talk a little bit about yesterday. Remember how we talked about um, landslides, right? We looked at this specific presentation and we went through it. We saw how it had things, right, like good pictures. It had um, some links for some videos. And I want to point out the very beginning, right, this is the introduction. They have their topic sentence, which tells us what this whole presentation is going to be about. So if I were going to highlight all of this information here, right here, see if you can see that. Read on to learn why landscapes occur, or landslides occur, where they are likely to happen, and how to stay safe. Those three parts that this writer is talking about, that's part of their topic sentence. It's telling us what we're going to read about, right? And on those slides that come next, it says exactly that, right? This next one talks about why do landslides occur? And the next one talks about where do landslides happen? And then finally, how people can stay safe during a landslide, right? So they kind of give us a bit of a preview of what they're going to be sharing about. You're going to do that as well when we write our introduction. You'll have your hook and your lead. We'll talk about that. And then you'll write your topic sentence, giving that, that little bit of a preview. Now I want to show you a different um, presentation today. This one's not on landslides, but it's on sinkholes. So if you're interested right, in another type of natural disaster, okay, sinkholes, we're going to learn a little bit about that. Now, my friend that teaches at Roosevelt actually recorded herself reading this uh, presentation, right? And that's what I'm really going to be doing as well. But that's why we put um, screen recording as one of the things on our list, because you can actually display your presentation and you can read through it and record it with your own voice. Makes it a little bit more interesting than somebody just um, reading it on their own. Okay, so this one is sinkholes. It's just an example. And I want you to notice the topic sentence for this one. It says, what is a sinkhole? And this one looks a little bit different, right? It's, it's a circle. It's got a different way to display the information. You can do that in Google Slides. You can pick from a lot of different what's called templates or designs or layouts. Okay, so this says, what is a sinkhole? It is a frightening thought to imagine the ground below your feet or house suddenly collapsing and forming a big hole in the ground. Did you notice that that sentence was in quotation marks? Sinkholes don't happen often, but when they do, destruction can occur. Read on to find out how sinkholes form, the different types of sinkholes, and where they are most commonly found. Can you be a good detective and find that topic sentence, what in that paragraph gives you a little bit of a preview of what you're going to learn? You know you're going to learn about sinkholes, but what specifically are you going to learn about sinkholes? Read and see if you can figure it out. You're going to learn how they form, 
different types of sinkholes and where they are most commonly found. So you're giving your reader a, a glimpse into what they're going to be learning. Well, look at that. How are sinkholes formed? We just read that in the topic sentence. Sinkholes, are, sinkholes form when rock below the surface of the ground begins to dissolve in water. When the rock dissolves, holes fill with water underground. If that underground hole gets too big, the land above it can suddenly collapse, making a sinkhole. So they've got a nice title for this slide, and then they've got not only words describing, but they've got a really good graphic, a nice picture that shows us exactly what they're explaining, right? Lots of water under here. This hole is forming, and when it gets too much water, right, that water, that land above it can collapse, makes, which makes a sinkhole. So this was part of the topic sentence in their introduction. Where do sinkholes happen? We learned that they were going to tell us about that as well. Look, at they have a nice map here of the United States. Sinkholes occur more often when certain types of rock are found underground. Rock types like salt and gypsum are more dissolvable in water. In the United States, sinkholes are most commonly found in Florida, Texas, and California. They've got another photograph. It's nice and clear. It shows the information. And look what they did here. They added a fun fact, right? So maybe you've come across interesting information. And you don't quite know um, how to incorporate that in your paragraph. You can write a fun fact as long as it's kind of connected to right, whatever it is that you're talking about. It says the biggest sinkhole in the US happened in Shelby County, Alabama. It was 300 feet wide and 120 feet deep, nicknamed Golly Hole. Okay. I'm guessing that this is a picture of that biggest sinkhole that's ever happened in the United States. Let's see what's on the next slide. Oh, five largest sinkholes caught on camera. I don't want to ruin the surprise here, but when you go to this presentation in Google Classroom, right, not my video, but I'm going to link this as well, you can click on this and you can see uh, a video display of the five largest sinkholes that were caught on camera, right? A lot of times we see things after they've already happened. This catches it in the act. So I'm not going to play that for you. I want you to watch that on your own. The next slide. Oh, preventing sinkholes. It says there are some ways to prevent sinkholes. First, oh, good transition word. If you live in an area where sinkholes are common, it would be helpful to hire an inspector to find out if you have underground water. Second, think about replacing any underground pipes that might be old and leaky. Third, if a sinkhole starts to form, there are ways to fill the underground holes before they become a disaster. So they just told us three ways to prevent sinkholes, right? Those transition words, first, second, and third. And look at, they have corresponding numbers that go directly with those examples. First, right, here's an inspector checking things out. Second, they're replacing those underground pipes. And then third, Right? If they start to form, there are ways that they can fill the holes. So they're showing an example of that. So we've talked about those three parts that were in that topic sentence. In conclusion, sinkholes are scary, but fascinating. Understanding how they are formed and where they are commonly found can help prevent tragedy. Now that you know all about the dangers of sinkholes, what about tsunamis? Oh no, they left me thinking about another kind of natural disaster that could happen. Oh, now I'm curious about tsunamis. Look at the next slide. It says sources, and it has links to all these places, right, where they got this information from our presentation. Yesterday, we looked at landslides. Let's take a peek at that. Remember yesterday? introductory paragraph they talked about reading on to learn why landslides occur 
where they are likely to happen, and how to stay safe. Those were like the big three questions that they were gonna answer in this presentation. And as we go through the presentation, I notice that the sources were on each slide. Let me see if I can move my recorder up. Right, they were on each different slide. Okay, so we go to the next one. Oops, sources again there. This one showed more sources. Okay, here was the Red Cross as a source. Right, so they showed where they got their information on each slide. On the sinkhole presentation, they showed it all at the end. But the important thing is, they shared where they got the information, right? You can't just take someone else's ideas. You need to give them credit, okay? So that's what research does. It's you going and finding the information and sharing it, but also saying, this is where I got that information from, okay? So the last thing we're gonna to do today, I'm gonna to change back to my camera. I'm gonna turn my page and I'm gonna explain our power organizer for our informational presentation, right? You've drawn this three times before, I think, right? We have our top triangle, our three middle rectangles and our bottom triangle. Get that out of the way. Let's explain the parts, right? The shapes are the same, but the information that's inside each shape is going to be different because we're covering a different topic, right? You're doing a different type of writing. You're still going to have a hook or a lead, and we'll talk about what that's going to look like. Ooh, you're going to write your topic sentence. So this is that preview of what you're going to talk about in your presentation, okay? You're going to have some specific things to talk about in this presentation, okay? In your three middle paragraphs, you're going to cover your animal. What do they look like? The technical vocabulary for that is their appearance. So you're going to talk about the appearance of your animal, right? Thinking about all different kinds of information, not just the color of their fur or their skin or their feathers, right? But talking in detail about all the different parts. This would be a great place to put a picture with some labels or a diagram. Your second or your middle rectangle paragraph is going to cover right the question of what do they eat which is the technical vocabulary word diet right what does your animal eat and remember we're giving details we're not just making a list and then our third subtopic our third question that we're going to answer is where do they live and that technical vocabulary is an animal's habitat right where they live so you're going to work on finding these three pieces of information when you do your research on your animal of your choosing. Okay. Then at the bottom, we have our bottom rectangle. We're going to restate our topic like we did at the top, right? the things we're going to cover. And then we're going to have our conclusion at the end. So your job today is to copy down your power organizer in your writer's notebook. Right? You've got this page. And then we have our strong presentation with our, our weights at the top. We added screen recording because you can read your presentation to your readers. Okay. And then today you're going to add your own power organizer. Okay. I have shared power organizers with you in the past. Too many people didn't keep track of them, turned them in when they didn't need to, couldn't figure out what to do. So your job is to create your own. You're going to copy it exactly like mine. You're going to copy down everything I have written on here, but you are not filling anything else in. We are not ready to move forward. All you're going to have in this top triangle is what I have written. Okay, these green pieces in the rectangles is all you're going to write down. Same thing for the bottom. Okay, you're not adding any information. You're just writing down kind of the outline of what it is you're going to be researching, all right? So I would suggest taking a, uh, a pause, right? So that the video stops and you can copy this down. Remember, you can always go back if you didn't get something from one of the other pages. And then your job is to take a photograph of this page today 
and turn it in so that I can see that you're following those directions and that you've got everything copied down the right way so that I can help you or Mrs. Petrowski can help you. If you've made a mistake, we know where to look. All right, have a great day.